Today I look at the Stochastic RSI Indicators Calculation and explain how this sets out to address many of the problems with the standard RSI. Back after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The Stochastic RSI Technical Indicator was designed specifically to address several issues with the standard RSI. Today I look at these and lay down the foundations for the analysis I'll perform to attempt to inform if it achieves this or not. My study of the Stochastic RSI Indicator is all part of the Spotlight on Indicator series. And as always, you can find a link to the full playlist of all episodes in the description below. Before we get into the details of the formula, let's remind ourselves about some of the characteristics of the standard RSI and the stochastic RSI. So the line that you see in blue in the center here is the basic RSI with a period of 14. And then below, we see the stochastic RSI, which is based on those RSI 14 values. Now, there's quite a significant difference here in the way that these two indicators behave. Looking at RSI first, we can see that this only enters the overbought territory twice in this whole period. And here I've set that level at 70. Whereas if we look at the stochastic RSI, we can see that this enters the overbought territory many more times. And here I've set the threshold at a level of 80. Next, if we turn our attention to the oversold area, we can see again there are just two instances where RSI measures the price action as being oversold, this time using a threshold of 30. And in fact, even when the price reaches this lowest level and then reverses, the RSI didn't classify it as being oversold. So you can start to see some of the issues here if you were wanting to use RSI as an overbought oversold signal. But if we compare that to the stochastic RSI, we can see that that does capture this major turning point in the price action as being oversold and also captures many of the other downturns. The analysis that I'll be performing We'll be focusing on how stochastic RSI can be used in trading strategies, but also specifically looking at the effectiveness of stochastic RSI compared to the standard RSI. Now, this latter indicator was specifically designed to overcome many of the issues of the standard RSI. And I've covered these in detail before, but very briefly, this is that RSI can go through very long periods without entering the overbought or oversold regions. And we've just seen that in the chart. And one way that many traders often try to tackle this issue is by lowering the thresholds of the levels of the overbought and oversold regions. But the problem with this is that when RSI does go into those territories, it can now stay there for extended periods. And so both of these issues mean that RSI is not ideal if you're looking to use it for overbought and oversold signals. So let's start to look at some of the specific details for stochastic RSI. Firstly, this is not a completely different indicator. It's based on the values of RSI itself, which of course is one of the best known and probably widely used indicators. However, it has a stochastic calculation layered on top of those RSI values. 
But just like RSI, it still ranges between values of 0 and 100. However, because the stochastic RSI tends to find it easier to get into those extreme levels, usually it has a slightly higher threshold level. So above 80 for overbought and below 20 for oversold. But again, just like RSI, because of the fact that it's range bound between these two values, regardless of the price of the asset and regardless of the time frame, this is something that does make it ideal for algo traders because it makes the coding process so much simpler. So let's look at the calculation and try to get some understanding of why this works. The first step is just to calculate the standard RSI values. So the values that we saw on the blue curve a moment ago. And then next, we perform a stochastic calculation on those RSI values. And this is what that looks like. And you'll notice here that there are no price values. It only uses the RSI values, which of course are based on the price, but the price isn't used directly. Now let's just think about the rationale behind this. The numerator here is the current value of the RSI minus the minimum value. So effectively here, we're looking at how far above the minimum the current value is compared with the denominator, which is the full range of RSI. So the maximum value minus the minimum value. And so we have to perform the stochastic RSI calculation looking back at a certain number of RSI values. And this is an important point because the stochastic RSI can have a different calculation period than the RSI that it actually uses as an input. And this can sometimes be difficult for people to get their heads around. But in this example here, just think that the RSI values themselves could have been calculated, let's say on the basis of 14 periods. But then when we turn our attention to the stochastic calculation, we could look back at say the last 10 of those RSI values. So the RSI periods are 14 and the stochastic RSI periods are 10. And in fact, I've used those values as an example because when Perry Kaufman discusses the use of stochastic RSI in his Kaufman Constructs Trading Systems book, they are the values that he uses. Also, when I perform my analysis, they are going to be the starting point for me also. So let's run some example values through this calculation to understand it better. I'm going to look at three examples, but all are going to consider the same range in the RSI. So we're going to imagine over those last 10 periods, the maximum value seen in RSI was 80, and the minimum value that we saw was 15. So the only other value that we need in the calculation above is the current value of the RSI. And in our first example, I'm going to say that this is 78. So it's very close to that maximum RSI value. And now by simply plugging those values in, we come out with a stochastic RSI value of 96.9. So extremely close to the top of its 100 range. So in other words, when RSI is close to its maximum value, in the period of consideration, stochastic RSI will be high. Now, bear in mind that these values are raw values before smoothing. Very often, stochastic RSI does use smoothing, but we'll come on to that in a moment. Next, we keep our range of RSI values the same, but now the current RSI is very close to that minimum level. And plugging in the values now, gives us a fraction of 2 over 65, which is just 3.1. So very close to that minimum zero level. And so already you can see that the stochastic RSI values are more extreme than those of the RSI. But of course, in the last example, if we look at a value that's more or less in the middle of that range, then equally, 
stochastic RSI will be close to the center of its own range. And these values come out at 46.2, just slightly below the center line of 50. So the outcome of this is that the stochastic RSI tends to follow the same kind of oscillations. However, the values are standardized at a higher level. Now, it helps to work through this on a chart. So let's concentrate on this area here. As you can see, the RSI is currently in an upswing of its oscillation. It hasn't, however, entered the overbought region, whereas we can clearly see that the stochastic RSI has. So if we compare the blue RSI values to what they were 10 periods ago, which is the number of periods for the stochastic calculation, we can see that the current values are pretty much at the top of the range of RSI values, which is why stochastic RSI is overbought. If we now look at an oversold example, here again we can see that the RSI values have headed downwards for some time, but not reach that oversold region, which the stochastic RSI has. But again, by looking at these values compared to the values 10 periods ago, we can see that the RSI is at the bottom of this short term range in values, which is why the stochastic RSI does make that oversold region. So hopefully that's given a better understanding of how stochastic RSI works, but also illustrated how it might get over some of the issues we experience with the standard RSI. Now, as part of my initial analysis, I looked at numerous different stochastic RSI indicators for the MetaTrader platform, and I came to a decision about the one that I will be using and I've done that for a number of reasons, which I'll be explaining in the next episode. So I'll share that indicator with you, provide details of where you can download that for yourself. And this will mean, of course, if you want to follow the analysis along with me, you'll be able to look at your own charts using exactly the same indicator that I'm using. In the episode that follows, I'm going to be looking specifically at the first strategy I'll be performing my analysis on. And broadly speaking, this will be looking for overbought, oversold signals, and I'll be comparing the effectiveness in a real trading strategy of the two indicators we've talked about. And then in the following episode, I'm going to be looking at divergences in both RSI and the stochastic RSI. Before you go, would you like to find out more about how DarwinX helps thousands of traders just like you to attract investor capital? If so, either click on the DarwinX logo on the screen or find other links in the video description below. Now, until next time, trade safe.